Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. I'll bring you down and we'll dump, we'll put in all of the grass that we can. We've got 24,000, uh, 24 and a half thousand litres of grass in here. We'll dump all of this in for the cows. Then we're going to have to go back to ferrying water and we need a lot of it. We're still only seven degrees for planting so we're nowhere near being able to go and plant the maize just yet that's got to be 10 degrees I don't want to do it while it's too cold because otherwise we're going to end up with a load of germination failed aren't we and that I could really do without let's jump down here a second and have a look in there 14,000 right we got we're going to have some spare not a massive amount but we have got a little bit there maximum for two days like that Go down to there. I got 23,666 litres of grass plus. We've got a load of hay and silage as well. So in theory, we've actually got more than two days worth. If you were to fill all three of these bars, I believe in theory it would use up that one, then it would use up that one, then it would use up that one. And yes, the effectiveness would lower down. So you get 100% for the first two days, then 75 for the second two days, and then 60% for the last two days. But you do have food in there for six days in theory now that might not actually be the case that it might be that it doesn't work like that at all but no i i could remain hopeful on that one let's just um we'll leave that one there uh oh no i need to go i need to take this one back over i'll leave the crone right here i'll unhitch that one i'm gonna get the water tanker again and we're gonna get another load of water Interestingly, the water hasn't actually emptied out. I started it emptying out and then I unhitched it like that, which is what we used to be able to do. We certainly, we used to be able to do that in FS17 and it would keep unloading. So I don't know. I mean, if I jump out now, it should... It's still... Yeah, it, it, it will keep doing it if you unload if you just jump out of the vehicle but for whatever reason it doesn't actually seem to like doing it um after you unhitch i'm well you see now i'm sort of second guessing myself and i'm thinking did it actually used to do that or not and i'm pretty sure that it did i'm i'm 99 certain that if you jumped out of the vehicle while it was unloading in fs70 not if you had jumped out if you unhitched it while it was unloading in FS17, it would keep going. It would keep flowing. And so you would still have the stuff um, pouring out into the um, into the trough or whatever it was that you were on, you were pouring out into. Um, I mean, yeah, okay, so that's another limitation there that we now know about. And I keep doing this. I keep turning it too sharply. But, I mean, in my defense, I don't think that this tanker actually turns as sharp as it's supposed to right it the way that it moves it definitely seems wrong and also those hydraulic arms they shouldn't be down there like that they should be up they should be higher so the hitch can rotate underneath it look if i if i swing that one round tight like that that hydraulic arm is actually clipping into the vehicle right it shouldn't do that look 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 at it clipping right in it should be able to turn a little bit sharper than that but it is actually clipping right into the arm there and it, it shouldn't it should be up up out of the way so it's not going to hurt anything you can actually fold them up although most people don't bother doing that it's just a thing that you're able to do now can i squeeze in through here i think i can yes of course i can i have squeezed already I'm curious how long it's going to take for our water to turn up for the cows. I'm thinking it's going to be several days at least. So let's dump that one in there. And we can take a quick look at everything down here. We do need to give our chickens a bit of food. 1,088 pounds and 46%. Now we've got plenty of grass. We've got a little bit of water. But we don't have anything else. Now, it's... I'm sure that wasn't in pounds before. Not for the cows, at least. Maybe it was. Maybe I got this wrong. I don't know now. Now I'm just confused. I don't think... No, I haven't done any update for anything. So whether I've 
accidentally change something without realizing? Well, it's not going to be in there, is it? So let's try that one. I don't think there's anything that I've changed it in. Because, I mean, you've got temperature unit in Celsius, but there's no other temperature units. So I don't think that that's going to have made any difference. I'm going to get some more water because we still don't have enough. Uh, temperature is still not right for doing any planting. We do need to get some... Actually, what is it that we do need to get? We do need to get some food in for the chickens. And we're going to leave that a little... I'll tell you what, we will start fast-forwarding time again. We will tick along and we'll keep that going for a little bit. So we can top the chickens right up today. We should then be able to skip the day completely tomorrow when it comes to feeding chickens. And not have to worry about them at all. I don't want to go too far on ahead. Um, just in case the chickens actually run out of food. We don't want them to do that. Now let's back in round there without turning this one too sharp now. If we can. Can we do that? Excellent. Right, that one's going to come out there. Let's check on these chickens. The chickens are doing just fine. I've got complete and total confidence in the chickens. It's the cows I'm a little bit more worried about. Right, we, we, with, with the, um, I mean, the hay silage and all of this, this is doing absolutely great. But the, the, the water thing for the cows, the water thing for the cows is the bit that is more than a little bit concerning, considering how long it's taking. I don't want to be doing this for too long. Fortunately, we have got the pig one installed, so we're not going to have all of this messing around when it comes to the pigs. We'll just be able to deal with them as and when. Once we get to lunchtime, I'm going to stop. Oh, I'm just going to slow down at least and... Oh! Aha! Okay, right. Well, let, let me just bring this one over here and I'll unload it because then it's unloaded and we don't, we, we don't need to worry about it. So you unload there. And finally, the cows, the, 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 the water. It's all done. Look, see, we've got this massive great big tank in here, which I'm assuming is collecting the water off the roof. But why they had to stick it in there, I'll never know. Go and have a look now. How are my girls doing? 23,000 litres of water right now. So now we don't need to do any of this messing around. This is all gone. This is all days gone by. We, we, we no longer need it. We do that. There we go. We open that one. We crank that one right open like that. And then come down here and... Wow. Okay, it's slow going. We're going to have to just leave that one to, to, to run. I'm, I'm not going to bother. To, I am just going to come over here and take a look at it. Look at this. Look at this. Automatic feeding of water. It's wonderful. We've actually got automated water supply into our cows. That is just amazing. How many cows have we got? Of course, you can't see how many cows you've got in here anymore. That's, that's no longer a thing that we can do. Because I, I, even if you like, you go to where the, the changeover bit is, large cattle pasture right there. I go to that, but I can't actually see how many animals are in it via the animal screen anymore. Which is something that I do dislike. Quite, I, I really do dislike that bit. So we've got 120 cows at the moment. I did say go big or go home, didn't I? Should I go and get a load more cows? Should I get more now? We start buying more. We won 959. We're well below the 2000 mark right now. This would seem to be the optimal time to go and get two more loads of cows. Another 72 cows. The last couple, we could just leave them. But 72 more cows right now. Get those into the pen. And then we're done with cows, right? We've got every cow we could possibly want right the way through. We're not going to need any more at all. What I am going to do a minute. Is I'm just going to stop that one there. Like that. I'm, I'm just going to leave that one there a second. And we're going to feed these chickens, right? The 225 litres of grain. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab the loader and the bucket for a minute. Just like this. And I'm going to go and get that small trailer there. The, the brown trailer. Because that one's still got some grain in it. And I'm going to use that one. I'm going to go over. I'm going to feed the chickens. Then I'm going to come back. I'm going to put this trailer right back. Actually, I'm, going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the trailer over and I'm going to empty that one out. We'll use this trailer later on when it comes to feeding the pigs. I'm not going to use it now for the chickens because we've got that other attachment now, which goes on the front of this front loader. And it works B-A-U-T-fully. 
It does. It works absolutely beautifully. It's it's perfect. Absolutely spot on perfect for what we want. So I'm going to bring you over to there. And I'm going to start unloading like that. Dump all of that in there. Vast quantities of grain have just gone in. We've got 2,000 litres of grain in there. And we've got a whole load of Rhode Island red chickens. And it's slowly going to be feed, uh, filling everything up. So I will put that back. Actually, no, I don't need to put that back on. We're going to take it round over here. And I'm going to empty out the grain. Then I'm going to leap into our truck and I'm going to drive off and I'm going to get some more cows. Now that we've got the water being dealt with. So I'll unload that lot right there. Let's have a look at the water. Okay, water is just about for 100,000 litres of water. This is just for two days. Right? You're only allowed to put in two days worth for... The, the, that's it. No, the, literally just two days. And we got well over 100,000 litres of water. That's insane. Now that, the, the, honestly, that is a ludicrous amount of water. I don't think... Well, actually, do they? I mean, cows do drink an awful lot of water. Dairy cows do. Dairy cows drink a huge amount of water. I mean, they need to because they're, all of that milk, it's um, it, its fluid, isn't it? It's, it's liquid. It's disappearing out of their bodies. So they've got to be able to replenish that um, fluid. And it's the only way to do it. So do I get the cows today or do I wait one more day and then go and get I'm thinking, actually, it would be better if I was to wait one more day because I should, in theory, be able to start doing my planting tomorrow. The ground is 7 degrees today, so if I'm able to start doing the planting tomorrow, I can... Let me just back that one up. Oop, oop, oop. Steady, steady. The, the problem with this tractor is it doesn't roll to a halt quite like the others. There. Now, don't use stop and go braking. I normally just... It just starts going backwards once it gets to a halt. But all the other tractors, you can sort of time it just right, and it, it works quite easily. This one does have a tendency to roll on a little bit. So it's a little bit more... It's just... It's a little bit more sensitive than most of the others. Uh... I'm looking at, well, I, I don't need to worry about any of that. Yes, the health of the cows is, a, you know, that, that, that's really quite a bad thing. Um, we're going to go like this. Let's speed that up by one more. There we go. We're going to go like that. And we're going to, I am just going to check the map a minute for, not just there. I want to check. Actually, I don't need to check grass. I don't need to have it like that. But I, I go growth like this, and then I can go soil composition. And remove the needs lime. Now, we've got weeds turning up all over these fields. And they're turning up in quite large quantities. So we're going to do... We're going to need to spray the fields for weeds pretty soon. So we're going to have to get the old herbicide going. Do something about that. Which is another task that we're going to do tomorrow. Now, this dolly over here. I talked about this dolly before. And it turns out there is one particular type of trailer that goes with it. And if I look on here, I can see the Flegel DHKA390 is the one that we want. So we need to go in here and we had uh, need to have a look for a Flegel. Flegel. There is the Flegel. Uh, Krampa. Flegel. DH. D, D. There, that one. That one. It's that one right there. That is the special trailer that goes with that dolly. Tipper trailers use tra semi trailers can be attached to a tractor by using a dolly. So we're going to go with that one there a second. And what I'm going to do is. And see, this one sits differently. Right? It's got that bit down there. That that every everything about this one seems slightly different. We've got design, we got. Ooh. Okay, I like that. That looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to just lease this one for a minute. I'm not going to do very much with it. I just want to see what it's like. I want to see all about it. Now, I'm going to slow time down a second because uh, one thing that um, I probably want to do is I probably want to return it. And you can return it for free if you're a little bit careful. Now, the idea with this one is you can use it for silage and stuff like that. You can go and take it out into the fields. You can swap them over. And you can take them right out onto the road. So I'm just going to move this one out. we get this one out of the way. I'm going to bring you over here. We're going to start using that one in the morning. If all goes to plan. So I'll leave you there. 
And then I will get this dolly on. Bring that one over that way. Ease you back through and join on to there like that. Now, if I start unfolding this one, just as I come up here like this, and yeah, I shouldn't be stopping while it's still sliding sideways because that's just going to completely rip those poor rubber tracks off and they'll never be able to use be used for anything ever again. Um, so then I bring that one back like this, and this should go either side... And go all the way back. There we go. Look at that. Now that will attach. That goes on there. That's how that one works. Right. So that, that one's gone up there. What was the other option that it had? I can... There's tip side, open cup. No, I want to go to that one there. I can... Right. I can lower that one down. That's what I did wrong. So we lower it down. And then I do that. No. I don't want to do that. I want to go to you. And lower that one down. So I, I back that one in like that. And it goes right up to the front with the wheels on behind. And then we hitch that one on there. Then lift it up. Oop. Lift it up like that. That raises it up in the air. That's lifted the entire trailer up in the air. So the road wheels that it's got. The road wheels are not actually... Um... Lowest ground pressure, enormous load capacity, ideal for road and field, reduced cargo drop height. See, it's all good, this one. It's all good. So that one there, you, you take this into the field like that, and that one can go on the back of the forage harvester. It can whiz up and down the field. It can do all of that stuff, and you've got the tractor using it in the field. And then what you do is you bring this one up beside the road... There, I'll take it up to the road like that, and then I lower it down like this, so the wheels of the truck, the wheels on the bus go round and round like that, and then we unhitch that bad, no, I don't unhitch that bad boy, I unhitch that bad boy like that. Then I pull away from this one like that, and I back into the second trailer that the lorry has just brought up the road, and then take that one off, and the lorry comes along, and it backs onto this one, and it goes whizzing off up the road, herring off up through and it goes and, and takes it all the way back so it's, it's actually a really good system i had a look at this seen it operating and it's a really really good system it works really well it, it seems like like it's, it's not one of those things that you sort of think oh yeah you know i get the idea behind it but honestly it just seems like a lot of money and a lot of waste this here is designed to really reduce the compaction in the field which is a really good thing to start with okay and that's one thing it's doing so you're spreading out the load across all of those tracks they're wider than the wheels they're longer than the wheels so you're reducing your field compaction for a start which is excellent number two you're not getting a load of mud all over those tires you can put it straight out on the road and it's not going to cause you a load of problems with mud going on the road which can result in fines for the farmer and stuff like that so that's another sort of bad point to it um uh, not to this but a bad point to doing it normally like if you're just using another regular dolly and then the other sort of really fantastic thing about this one is that it's um you're able to use a lorry doing this. The lorry is not going to... It can't get into the field. It's, it's going to get stuck in the field. You can go in with a tractor and you can haul it round inside the field with the tractor doing this. Then if you want the, the faster road speed, which is far faster than what the tractor can achieve, that's when you've got the lorry out on the road. So, it's, I mean, it's a really, really good system. I really like this. I think this is an excellent idea. I've never seen it before. Never seen it in real life. I'd not seen it in the game before I, either. I, I didn't sort of realise that such a thing existed. But having had a look at it and followed a couple links that people have showed me, it's really awesome. It genuinely is absolutely fantastic. And I think it's a brilliant thing. So I'm just going to return that one as well, like that. Um, I'm very impressed with that. It's a really cool little system. And so I'm thinking that we will probably try and find a way to use that later on in series and see if we can do something with it on the farm because it is it's a big scale thing it's definitely for big scale you wouldn't be using that on any kind of small scale farm that would be that's big scale because you've obviously you've got a lorry going on the road and uh, that gets expensive and then not to mention the kit itself the kit is you know 
I was going to say a bit expensive. It is very expensive. There, there's no two ways about it. It's a very expensive kit. So if you're going to be getting that, you're going to be farming on a big scale anyway. Seems right. We're doing big scale here. That seems to be one of the toys that we need to be trying out. So that is on my to-do list. We're going to be testing that one out. Now I'm just going to bring this in here. I'm still unsure if weeds actually have any impact on grass in seasons. Don't know anything about that. One thing I will be doing, like I said, is we will be doing a bit of spraying. That's one thing that we are going to do. I'm going to... Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn this one round because if I... Oh. I thought those red straps were the hinge straps, but they're not. So I want to go this side and I'll bring you up. We're going to be putting corn into the field and we're going to be... Well, I was wondering about using this tractor... But now I'm thinking I don't want to use this tractor. Right? Let's put some fertilizer in here to start with. So what tractor should I use? I'm definitely not going to use the IMF over there because we've used that one a lot. The case we've been using for doing some fertilizing. I did a little bit of... I think I said I'd use the Challenger because we did a bit of cultivating with the Challenger. But we haven't done a huge amount with that one or the T9 to be honest. So I'm thinking, yeah, we'll go and use that one. That would be the one to do this time. Put some seed in here as well. Seed goes into the back. Oh, I've already filled the front section up. Now we filled that section up there. Let's close you down. Hopefully, in the morning, we will be able to go and do our crops. I mean, I could just use this tractor that I've got hooked on here, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to unhitch that one there. I'm going to move this tractor off out the way. I'm going to put you over this side, like that. There. And it's almost night time. Yeah, we're going to use the Challenger, I think. This is the one we're going to use for this job. And then we'll put the T9. I know the T9 has only been used for doing lime at the moment. Uh, we'll use that one for another job fairly soon. I don't know what job it's going to be, but we will use it for a job. The Fent, we will use that one for things like running around doing... Um, right, let's shunt you off. Uh, we'll use the Fent for running around doing things like uh, grain cart and stuff like that. Because it's a nice fast tractor. It's got a, it's got a nice high road speed and uh, things like that. So it's going to keep it going quite well. That's, that's the sort of thing that we would want for doing any road speeds. This is not the house that I slept in. That's the other thing. Is we've got all these houses dotted all over the place. I want to get rid of some of them. So let's... Slow you down again. We're 9.37 in the morning. The ground temperature is 11 degrees C. We've got more weeds coming up in this field over here. We've got a few coming up in that one. The grass. Don't care about the grass. I absolutely do not care about the grass. What I am going to do is I'm just going to look there. And we're going to see growth. Nothing changed yet. No change. So we will switch that one. Of, and I'm going to go over to the animals. Right here, I've got... Wait, what? i got new... New chickens! Look! Zero pounds. Zero pounds and one pound. That's a male there. That doesn't look like a male. Uh, so, we've got, we've, got, we've got a few chicks. We've got some chicks have turned up. They're small ones. And we looked out at... Wow, there's a load more. So, the rooster is 13 pounds. So, obviously, one of my chickens has gone and sat on the egg somewhere and has produced more. I like this. I like the fact that this has happened. Now, we're going to have a look at the Holsteins. And we've got loads of grass. We've used up all of our hay and silage now, and we're sort of working on this. We've used up half of that 60,000 litres of water that we had. We're on 50%. We're up to 49% health. We're doing okay. Next animal in. Now, it's not saying anything. It was saying previously that they weren't fertile. And now it's just saying next animal in never. We're, not, we're never going to have any more animals on there, according to this. But then, that's what it says. But if, and if I go... Right, well, there's nothing at the top. Let's go down to the very bottom. There's nothing down there either. Right, well, it doesn't... Oh, no, age two years. Nothing's changed, really. Okay, no, no, there's no differences on that bit. So I'm going to go over here. I've got that on dollars. That shouldn't be on dollary dues. That should be on euro dues. 
Okay, I've changed it over to Euro Dews. I'm going to go and gather up the grain in front of the chickens. We will gather up the silage in front of the cows and we'll dump all that lot in. And then we can head out to the field and we can start doing some more work. So let's just if we do that. There we go. Right. 16 litres of wheat. What was the cleanliness rating on that? Something ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, 16 litres of wheat gives us a 40... That, that, that basically makes it 40% dirty outside. Not really something that we want. Now, it keeps it doesn't give us an estimated time for the next animal. I got not fertile on those two, which are really young. And these, it doesn't give us any kind of estimate whatsoever. So you've got no clue when you're going to be getting any new animals at all in this. And if I go over to here and I have a look, I got 209 out of 400. So they're slowly building up. We know that they're building up. And yes, it's still much the same. We've got 209 out of 400. So it's, it's, it's all Rhode Island Reds, at least. We have got those. It's a little bit confusing. It's got to be said that, that there is a little bit of confusion and confuddlement about how this whole thing works. Let's go and do this bit a minute. I'll not worry about the water for the cows. What I am going to do is I'm going to clear up the silage, but then I'm going to not do anything else to the cows for a minute. I'll put you... Down like that. That's going to pick up all of the silage. As far as hay is concerned, I've gone and done a little bit of research on that. And as from what I can see, what I need to do is you can just leave it and it will turn into hay. Uh, but what you can also do is if you go over it with a tether, it does turn it into hay straight away. However, it'll only do that if it hasn't rained. If it has rained, then the ground will be clear that the grass will be classed as wet. So even if you go over it with a tether, it's not going to turn it into hay. It will just stay as grass. You've got to wait until it dries. And the little symbol disappears before it will actually turn into the appropriate crop and uh, in, uh, turn into hay. So we're going to take this one out to this field over here. We're going to start planting our corn in this field. There's something else now. Uh, it's not in here, it's in this one. Our rotation planner right here. I don't get this. Right, canola on here is saying oilseed. Yeah, I got canola there and it's calling it an oilseed, which it is, it's an oilseed. But on the Black Mountain map, when I look at it on there, I do have the Midwest Geo, and I don't know if the Geo has changed the classification of the seed, but it's classing canola as a cereal and not as an oil seed. And that seems a little bit strange to me. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that, but it is. It's calling one of them a geo and one of them is... what On here it's an oil seed, but when I'm on that map it's not calling it an oil seed. And I don't really understand why. I don't know why, because it is an oil seed. That's, that's the whole point of it. It's an oil seed. Right, that one... There. Now, in theory, if I just press H, it should start going around the outside of the field. Let me go. I need to go Control H on here. I've got the AI. It's going to go around that direction. So let me just press H on there. Vehicle extension. It's corrected itself. And it's going off around the outside edge of the field. Now, I, I'm never really very good. Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that, if you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.